Everybody, the trampoline is working. SpaceX has made history with its launch of astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley on the reusable Falcon X-9 rocket. But if a patent fight six years ago had gone differently, SpaceX could have been forced to pay Blue Origin millions of dollars for each reusable rocket it launched. I'm Ian Bennett, and this is Patent Letters, a show about intellectual property around the world. Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos have been in a tiff, a billionaire feud, for quite some time. Part of the controversy stems from a patent dispute back in 2014. Elon's problem is that to patent something, you don't necessarily need to achieve it first. Despite SpaceX being the first to land a reusable rocket, and only then, in 2015, Blue Origin was the first company to file the idea as a patent. This technique, which is set to revolutionize space travel, wasn't on the minds of many people back in 2009. So, in that year, Blue Origin was granted a patent for sea landing of space vehicles and associated systems and methods. With patents, the name of the game is the claim. And Blue Origin claimed a method of operating a space launch vehicle and returning it to land on a structure in any body of water, the familiar reusable rocket. The reusable rocket is launched into space, separates from its payload, reorients vertically, and returns to Earth to land on a ship. Anyone else who wanted to use the concept themselves would need Blue Origin's permission in the form of a license. But SpaceX had a problem with the claims and launched an inter partes review, a patent board challenge, to invalidate the patent. Patent litigation can often run into the hundreds of thousands of dollars but some things are worth fighting for. You see, SpaceX was aware of the research of Yoshiyuki Ishijima, who, along with his colleagues, published a paper on reentry and terminal guidance for vertical landing in 1998. Blue was either unaware of the study or failed to disclose it to the patent office. Inventors are not required to exhaustively research their patents, so it's most likely the former. However, if there is prior research, your claim is most likely invalid so it's in your best interest to do the groundwork. There's a claim circulating online that SpaceX made the challenge based on some old sci-fi videos, but the court proceedings don't seem to make mention of it. An idea must be new and it must be non-obvious to be patentable. SpaceX challenged Blue Origin's claim as an obvious advance from Ishijima's research. Ishijima and his colleagues simulated guidance requirements to land a rocket back on a sea-based platform, including the power descent. Blue's concept stops seeming unprecedented if you compare it to the simulation models created by Ishijima's team. Even the drawings seem similar, down to the little boat lander. Blue Origin saw the writing on the wall and decided not to fight the review any further. They asked the Honorable Judge DeFranco to cancel their patent and their claims. At least Blue Origin decided not to fight it any further in this setting. While the review was going on, Blue Origin asked the USPTO to reissue their patent in a reduced form. The USPTO has the power to reissue a patent to a party that claimed more than it should have. Blue Origin still wants the millions of dollars in potential profit from leasing their patent to other rocket companies, even if they must diminish some of their claims. The patent office has initially denied the reissue, but Blue is still pending an appeal. If the patent reissues, SpaceX will probably be grandfathered in through the intervening use clause. So fortunately, their patent fight is over. Reusable rockets are the future of space launches, at least until we have a space elevator. So I'm sure Blue Origin hopes its patent will be reissued so that it can retain some form of control over the technology. Thank you for watching, and if you're interested in the world of intellectual property, be sure to subscribe for more.